guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about close micing ride and close micing hi-hat. There's actually a couple cool tricks I wanna share with you today, specifically on really kind of my favorite trick on how to mic a ride and a hi-hat using ribbon mics. Okay, so I don't know where I picked this tip up. It might've been from like Michael Wagner or something, um, but the basic idea is to use a ribbon of course, for the tone, because it's usually a little bit darker, but you still get that really nice, quick transient. But it's mostly about the knoll. So we have the figure eight polar pattern. We have two knolls out to the sides, and of course, a knoll out to the tip of the mic too. And this enables us to actually rotate the mic and knoll out several elements of the kit at once. It's really pretty slick. And if you have ribbon mics to spare, you can mic up different things like ride and hi-hat and really make sure that you don't get any conflicts. So let's check it out at the kit and I'll show you what I mean. So there's a lot that can go into setting up a hi-hat mic and a ride mic. I know it seems real simple, but there's actually a lot of tonal variations that's really going on here. And there's kind of really three kind of ways I could break this down for you today. Uh, the first being uh, really the tone, the second being the knoll, and the third being the phase relationships. First, the tone. If you're right over the symbol, it's a little bit less annoying right over it. And it may actually be too much. You may not have enough of the clarity of the symbol if you're right over the hi-hat, right over the ride. You gotta be careful that you're not too much over the bell. But then on the opposite end, you have the edge of the, uh, the hi-hat, the edge of the ride. And over here, out here, you know, this angle where you have kind of a 45 degree angle looking down at the symbol, okay? Any of these positions here, these would be very bright positions here. These would be very kind of dull and kind of very scooped sounding and very bright coming in at this kind of angle Okay, any of these angles. We're getting a good side wide image with these two spaced pair overheads, but we're able to bring up the qualities of the hi-hat and the ride, and it's qualities that pair well with the overheads. Now, this overhead behind me here, it's really getting that good stick attack, but the position is chosen in such a way that it complements what we're getting from this overhead. So instead of going right over the bell and getting that kind of a, 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 somebody described it as like a gongy type tone, which is kind of what the angle is here, I'm going out to the side. So when I mix in this microphone, I'm adding in some brightness. Compared to this hi-hat rod here, that's probably gonna be the dullest sound, brightest over here. And based on how we are combining microphones, we can get some brightness out of the hi-hat without using EQ, we can do it right here. So after we've played around with the angle of the mic, whether it's above or act to the side of the hi-hat a little bit to get a brighter sound, now we have to consider the knoll of the microphone. Now what's cool about a ribbon mic is that we can kind of tilt the mic and point the mic and do all sorts of cool things as long as the hi-hat still sounds good. And we can use that angle to hopefully know what other elements of the kit we don't want to pick up. Now this is kind of it works out in your head better than it does in real life. Because if I were to really null out the snare by pointing the mic down and then null out the, the, the crash, then it's not gonna pick up the hi-hat so well. So it's kind of a, a give and take, you know, you, you null out elements as best you can, but then you also wanna make sure that you still actually like the sound of the hi-hat. Same thing with the ride. You know, it's, uh, it's great if you could null out the snare so that this mic isn't, fighting with this mic and fighting with that mic and interacting uh, but it's just not realistic to point the mic quite that aggressive down like this so for this mic I decided that it really needs to just kind of point 
kind of in this area rather than away from the cymbal, uh, which was just getting some weird gongy overtones that really weren't helpful at all. Kind of the third thing that I like to consider when using close mics on cymbals is you really got to consider the phase relationships between this mic overhead and the close mics on the snare, sometimes on the toms too, but we're really just focusing on the snare because if you screw up the snare, man, you really don't have a great drum sound. You got to get the snare right. Pull up your microphones. Listen to how loud the snare is in the hi-hat microphone and match that volume with the close mic of the snare drum. Then that's the point where I like to flip the polarity because I'm matching the volume of the snare. So I'm matching the snare bleed volume with the volume of this snare close mic. And by doing that, when I flip the polarity, hopefully I can hear the biggest difference. If these levels are a, a big difference, then I'm not going to hear it as well. But if I match the volume of this close mic to the bleed of the snare getting in, into the hi-hat mic, then I can really hear that difference. The first example here is going to be the snare mic fighting with the hi-hat mic. The second example, I'm going to just flip the polarity of this mic here, and you'll hear that the snare gets fuller, especially in the low end, like 100, 150 hertz. Okay, so the same thing could be applied with the ride microphone. A lot of times we may have conflicts in the kit because with so many microphones, we may have something that's subtracting or canceling out some of the fundamental tone, the fullness of the snare or some other elements. A lot of times it's a snare. I will always check the polarity and the phase relationship of hi-hat and ride against the snare. And if there's any conflict, I try to flip it and find the orientation that leaves the snare the fullest. I don't want these mics fighting with the snare and sucking out any of the life or the fullness of it. And of course, this null, this null is really key because we can null out things to the sides, we can null out things to the tip. It's really, really adaptable. So I'd love to know what you think of this. What are your favorite mics for hi-hat, for ride? Have you ever tried using a ribbon mic as a close mic on hi-hat or ride? I'd love to know your thoughts. Be hanging out in the comments below.